and here we have Armageddon, the 110 Land Rover Defender. And I have to admit, I love this thing, it's absolutely awesome. As you can see, it's no standard run-of-the-mill 110. This thing is absolutely fantastic, and it really has got uh, the stamp of me a stepdad on it, definitely. Hey guys, and welcome to this Wolfgift walk around. And um, sorry about the light, but there's good reason behind it. Today we are in a Land Rover Defender 110. Uh, it's a 2010 model, 60 plate one, and it's actually owned by my stepdad and driven by him and my mother, and they've been on numerous adventures in this one. It's an absolutely beast of a truck. I absolutely love it. And so I just thought I'd give you a Wolfkiff walk around, get up close and personal, and show you how cool this thing is. And as you can see, um, like I said, this is a more modern Defender. It's got the six-speed gearbox in it. Um, it's still got the selector for the four-wheel drive diff lock, high and low and everything. But because it's the newer model, it has got a lot more creature comforts. As you can see, the dash is a lot more modern. Um, steering wheel is a lot bigger, a lot softer. Um, you've got things in here like air conditioning, heated seats, uh, electric windows, just things that make this this just a bit of a nicer place to be than the old series uh, Landys and things like that. And as you can see by the passenger seat, it's uh, half leather, really comfortable. It's not your standard sort of uh, church pew sort of setup. It is absolutely lovely in here. Uh, and as you can see, the stereo has been upgraded um, by my stepdad. And it's, uh, yeah, you've got just all the other buttons, wash wipes, things like that in here. So, yeah, it's looking good. And this model, because it's a newer one, it's got the centre console, not the third seat, because I believe they actually, I'm not sure if I'm right about this, but uh, if I am, or if I'm not, let me know, um, because I think they outlawed the third seat, because that was a an optional extra on the Defenders, the early ones, but I think they stopped them because of uh, health and safety. So let's head under the bonnet. As you can see, it's got the very cool worn winch on the front, winch bumper, proper steel on it, which is fantastic. And it's also got all of the checker plate as a, that was an optional extra, I believe, originally, but it's nice and thick, which means you can actually stand on the bonnet and the wings, which helps when you've got a uh, luggage rack like that on the top. Also, it's got the snorkel option on there as well, so it can actually wade deeper through water, which is really cool, makes it better for being an adventure vehicle. But uh, yeah, let's pop under the bonnet and have a look at the power plant. And here it is. I believe this is the 2.2 Puma engine. Um, despite the big Land Rover cover of the uh, pump there, it's actually a 2.2 diesel engine that was designed and made by Ford, um, I believe. Um, and it is actually quite a good power plant. Um, really good, quite powerful for what it is. To be fair, I was always a huge fan of the TD5 when they changed over to this engine. I wasn't uh, taken with it by, f like, by it first um, but yeah as time's gone on I admit I actually do quite like this engine it's grown on me quite a bit especially after driving this one a little bit and being out in this one a little bit right as we move on to the wheels you can see it's got the BF Goodridge all terrains on it which is great because they're not too noisy they're not too much of an aggressive tread but they are good in the mud and the snow and everything and you can see that they're not on the standard Land Rover wheels they are on I'm not sure what these are I believe they are Mac 3s or Mac 5s correct me if I'm wrong um, as you can see it's got the big disc brakes on there being a 110 which is good um, and you can't actually see but this thing I have actually lifted this one two inches you wouldn't believe it by the looking at how well these wheels fill the arches but if we move along to the back I can actually show you it a bit better as you can see there look we've got shocks springs and I actually did fit um, oh you can't see it because I believe they're in the middle under the back I don't know if you can see it but I did actually fit some braided lengthened uh, brake lines just to give it a bit more travel with them and to also make sure everything was nice and safe and again you can see it's got a nice big disc conversion on the back being the 110 station wagon it needs it for the extra weight and uh, it's got the steps on the side although they do need replacing they're a little bit worse for wear but that is absolutely fine yeah, and the, uh, I'm going to have to push that back in, but I'm going to have to sort that out in a minute. But as you can see, it's got slam locks or dead locks on it to make it extra safe because anybody who knows Defenders knows how easy they are and how likely they are to be stolen. Um, as you can see on the back here, they've actually done away with the spare wheel that goes on the top when they go on a long journey usually. Um, so they can fit bags and things on the back. Also makes the door lighter and easier to get in and out of because I have dead locks off on this one. This is where they sleep when they go away camping. It did have a roof tent on it originally, but it was decided it it was quite big, cumbersome, quite heavy. So this actually helps save on the fuel and everything else like that. You've got the bed roll over there. Um, you've also got stereo system set up in the back. There's actually, for extra security, there is actually 
bars across the back windows, metal bars as well so people can't get in. There's also fly mesh there as well so they can actually have the windows open whilst they're in the back here. You've got the fans. Um, under here you've got some storage, bits and bobs which is fantastic. I love that, that is absolutely awesome. And yeah, just some more of the outdoor adventure kit. You've got steps to get in and out, ladder to get to the roof again so you've got extra things. You've got an awning up here, comes out the back. Another one that comes out the side which is awesome. And uh, yeah, just really cool setup, really cool camping rig when you're out and about. Of course the sticker from my car club on the back, supporting that one, Knights of the Road. You'll see more pictures of this one in there from myself and from my family. And one thing I wanted to show you is this. This is the kitchen setup. Uh, we actually fitted this one weekend. I was down in Devon. Um, Paul ended up buying this one. Um, ready to fit in. Uh, me and him fitted it. Uh, I let him do the cutting of it because I was not going to go and cut a hole in the side of this truck. I love this thing and it is, yeah, I don't trust my skills that much. But yeah, brilliant. This is, this is fantastic because you've got the awning that goes over the top. You can have a table underneath. This is your cooking station. It's brilliant. What a wicked idea. One thing I, want, one thing I wanted to point out is well, it's got the first four rear um, sort of bumper extensions as well. One you can use it as a step which is cool on this side and two it just makes it extra strong so if you do catch anything you're going to save your body work a bit. You've also got lighting set up, one at the back. You've got a load of LEDs as well which yeah they've put in which is really cool um, but you've also got the four spots on the front whilst they're starting to become a little bit dechromed they still work, they're still really bright, they're still made by Hello, which is really good. And of course you've got the CB aerials and radio aerials there, which are really good. Always worth it on an expedition vehicle. And again, more, more of the checker plate around the side, which is great. I just think the checker plate, checker plate really does make a landy quite good. Uh, one thing I wanted to say as well, I know some of you might be thinking, why did they call it the 110? Because you had the 90 and the 110. Well, I'll tell you. Right, 110 is the number of inches between the front axle and the rear axle. It is the wheelbase. So you had on this age, I think from the 90s onwards, you had the 90, which was 90 inches between the front and rear axle. Then you had the 110, such as this one, which is 110. You also had the 130 inch high capacity ones, which were more of a commercial sort of setup. And you also had, I mean, this one would have been the 110 van with a crew cab in it. You also had the 110 station wagon which had windows in the back similar to that cutout hatch. You had the 110 pickup truck which was the crew cab with a pickup on the back. You also had the 130 was mostly a pickup truck but you also had the 130 which was a 110 crew cab with a longer back on it, a longer chassis. Um, you also had one with cherry pickers, you had these used by the fire brigade, you had them used by everybody. Um, but you also had the 90s, which were, you could have a pickup truck which was a single cab pickup, or you could have a station wagon which had seats in the back, or the van which was like a crew cab pick, um, single cab pickup with a van back on it. Um, but yeah, I mean, then you had the early ones, the series Land Rovers, they were 88 wheelbase and a 109 I believe. Um, they may have had a high capacity, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, but yeah, again, let me know. If you know more stuff about this than I do, then comment below, please do. As you can see up here, we've got a shovel, which is, fan which is cool. I keep saying fantastic. Front runner, I think that's a water container. I'll have to ask, actually, because I'm not 100% sure on that. Um, yeah, like I said, hopefully we're going to be fitting a new set of steps before long when I come down at some point. I do like the snorkel idea. It's something I've been toying with for my truck, but... I haven't got the guts to go wading that deep anyway. One, because the door seals on my truck are ruined and it will just flood. And two, because if I flood that engine and ruin it, then I can't afford to get a new one. Yeah, not a bad little space to have. And something is instantly set up, almost like a caravan, isn't it? When you pull up somewhere, you don't even have to worry about the awning if you don't have, if you don't want to. Just cool. I believe this is a curtain roll. Same the other side, so you can roll these down. The only light you're going to have is out of those skylight windows then, which are easily coverable. But also, it's not going to wake you up early in the morning.
So I hope you enjoyed this quick Wolf Kiff walk around. Um, I wanted to do it because somebody asked, uh, they saw the Defender on social media and sent me a message and asked if they were going to see more of it on the channel. Um, the answer is yes. Um, if I do any more work to it, I will try and film it. I mean, when I did the lift kit, it was in the middle of winter in a barn. I really, I, th I don't even know if the channel was going then, um, but if it was, I don't think I wanted to film it because one, I didn't have the camera with me, I was down for a visit, and two, just because it was so cold, I could barely feel my hands doing it. So that was, uh, yeah, that was why that wasn't on there, so I'm, I apologise for that, but again, any more work I do to this one down in Devon, I will uh, give you guys a heads up and I'll do a video on it. Um, but yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, if you did, then let us know by hitting a like and subscribe below, and uh, stay tuned because there will be more Wolfkiff walkarounds, more hints and tips, more tech tips and tutorials, and just more general car hijinks. So, I hope you've enjoyed. If you have, then let us know, and I'll see you in the next video.